Let's take a look at the numbers for this fight, the tail of the tape. Dennis Andres, clearly the biggest difference between the two is in age, where Andres is 11 years older than Jeff Harding. 36 to 25, WBC rules are in effect today, the 10-point must system. There is no standing eight, no three knockdown rule, and a fighter can only be saved by the bell in the final round. And only the referee can stop the fight, and the referee for today's bout is Arthur Mercanti, the 70-year-old ring veteran, one of the great referees of all time. The seconds are being cleared. We are ready to go for the WBC Light Heavyweight Championship of the World. Jose Juan Guerra, Chuck Chiampa, and Tom Kazmarek are three scoring judges. Everything's in order, and away we go. Dennis Andres, the challenger, wearing the gold trunks. Clearly, you can see Andres across the front. Jeff Harding wearing all black. And Alex, we can only hope. Yeah, the, the odds makers don't think it will be as competitive, Dan. They've made Jeff Harding a 2-1 to one favorite, better than 2-1, to one, primarily because of the site. Uh, boxers traditionally have a terrible time performing at their peak after the long trip to Australia. As Alex mentioned, the last fight was dominated early by Dennis Andres. You see there, uh, Jeff Harding trying to move to his right, away from the Andres' right hand that gave him so much trouble especially in the early rounds of the first fight. Jeff Harding has always been a fighter willing to take two to give one. There you saw right hand from Dennis Andres. That last left really hit the gloves, but still had enough on it to move Harding back. He has been willing to trade the pass, Dan. I think Jeff recognizes that when he steps up to... There's, there's a good solid right hand. He hit the glove, but still... Knocked Harding's glove back into his face with enough force to snap his head back. I was just saying, I think Jeff realized that when he steps up uh, and tries to go for one of those unification fights, he cannot be so willing to absorb punishment. And it is a grim and determined Dennis Andres here in round number one. Halfway through the first round. Jeff Harding knows that he can't depend upon uh, you know, lightning striking twice. He cannot allow Dennis Andres to get off to that kind of a lead again. Then the right hand. Neither fighter had much trouble making the 175-pound weight. Andres, in a real change of pace, came in at 174 and a quarter. And as Alex mentioned, he had difficulty making weight a year ago and blamed that on his performance. Both fighters doing a little bit better defensive work. Hardy is blocking some punches with something other than his chin. Jeff Harding told us yesterday he even planned on flipping punches, something he's been working on, and that would be a revelation. Good double jab by Andres, followed by a solid right to the ribs. So despite what uh, Jeff Harding said about knowing he had to get off to a faster start, Dennis Andres has set the pace here in the opening round. The majority of the good punches in this round have been landed by Andres. He's been getting off first. Jeff Harding has been waiting a little bit too much. The Australian crowd is as quiet as their fighters been here in round number one. Here we go in the second round. Well, and again, it's Dennis Andres that comes out swinging and loading up more this this round. Well, you heard Emmanuel Stewart between rounds one and two telling Dennis Andres, stop throwing the right hand to the body. I want you to keep throwing the right hand, but I want it to go to the chin, and not to the ribs. And that's very unusual for Oh, and there is that right hand that goes over the top and lands. Very unusual for a trainer to tell his man to, to not work the body. Generally, they try to get him away from head hunting. Here, Emmanuel wants his man to go after the head. Very reminiscent of the start of the last fight. It has been Dennis Andres exacting a toll on Jeff Harding. 
He has not yet cut Jeff Hardy, and that's going to be an interesting thing to watch, Dan. This fight was originally scheduled for June 2nd. It was postponed because uh, a cut that uh, Jeff suffered in his last defense in March reopened in May, and it was postponed until today. I was going to say, you say that like a guy that doesn't have a lot of confidence. We're not even four minutes into the fight, Dan. Well, remember, he was cut about oh, 30 yeah. seconds into the first fight. He opens up easily. He opened up everywhere in that first fight, over both eyes, broken nose. Leading from the mouth. He has not yet even begun to find his rhythm. Well, he hasn't let his hands go at all. And that may be because he's concentrating on learning new things. It's always tough, you know, to, to Again, learn things in the gym. Again, the, the Andre's right hand gets home down. Jeff Harding is a key. You can just see him thinking in there about the things he's been learning from his new trainer uh, in terms of movement and defense. Maybe Jeff Harding uh, thinks because he's the younger man, the longer this fight goes on, the more it suits me. But still, it's a strategy that's based upon taking a lot of punishment if that's intentional. Good jab by both men there. Again, Jeff Harding, though, with the left hand a little low, pays for it by letting an Andre's right come over the top. Quite excited by a little bit of Harding work, but uh, a lot of those were slaps. Again, the right hand from Andre's. Now, Harding is doing a good job most of the time of keeping both gloves up alongside his face. A lot of Dennis Andre's jabs are catching gloves. There's a little bit of movement. And Jeff Hardy, you try to throw a punch with it, and it's badly. New thing. Still, I think Jeff Harding's opinion of Dennis Andres in this fight all boils down to his one statement. He's a year older, and I'm a year better. We've got 10 rounds to find out if that's true. So you're going to get in there and lift, try and step yeah, inside it. Get your right hand up and step inside it and you're doing it. Come on, son, you can do it. Come on, you can do it. It's hard. It's going to be hard. It's not going to be easy. But we knew it wasn't going to be easy, didn't we? Yeah. Now get out there now. Come on, and buddy will get that work off your buddy left hand. And jab, jab, jab. And don't stop, son. Come on, you can do it. Come on. Come on, Come on. Both fighters out of their stools a good 10 seconds before the end of the break. Anxious to get the third round underway. We are here in Melbourne, Australia at the National Tennis Center. I'm Dan Deardorff along with Alex Wallow and we're here for the WBC light heavyweight title fight. The title that's held by Jeff Harding, the Australian, formerly held by Dennis, Dennis Andres, the challenger there on your left. And Alex, the first two rounds clearly belonged to Dennis Andres. Yeah, I thought the second was a little bit closer, but still uh, gave it to Andres. You see Harding trying to move to his right occasionally, Dan, to stay away from the Andres' right hand. It is not something that's natural for a right-handed fighter to do, and it's been, he looks very awkward trying to do it. There is Emmanuel Stewart, the... Head honcho of the Crown Gym. He spent three solid weeks here with Dennis Andres and blames Andres' last defeat on the fact that he didn't arrive until the night before the fight in Atlantic City. Says I let him down. He's been here in Melbourne for two weeks where Dennis has even wowed the local valley by even talking about moving here to Australia. Uh, he was talking to cheap. They didn't know it, yeah. <laughs> Many fewer good solid scoring punches here than in the first fight, Dan. Much more missing. Jeff Harding, Alex, just hasn't learned to throw a lot of his punches with, a, with leverage. 
There's a right hand that lands, but still it was basically an arm punch. Yeah, he's a straight up kid who does not get leverage except with the left hook to the body, and I'm really surprised that so far he has really neglected the Oh, he's Oh, a good left hand by Dennis Andres, and you can see it wobbled the legs of Harding. And it didn't seem to be that clean a punch, Dan. It landed right on the forehead, though. And you could see Harding rocked back and then decided to try to come in, and his legs almost gave way. We're in the third round here in Melbourne. About 45 seconds left. DeAndre's corner yelling at him to keep throwing the right hand. And Jeff Harding looks stiff, Alex. Oh, and another good right hand from Dennis Andres. Another right hand. And now you're going to see, I think, Jeff Harding is the floor. I think all that stuff he just learned about movement and defense, he's just going to have to go out and throw punches. Again, I think back to the last fight and how we kept saying how Dennis Andre...